Hi, and on today's video, I'm going to cover off how to set up a virtual machine with Android OS installed. Now, there's many reasons you may want to do this. One, you may want to do it to play Android games, if you, particularly if you've just, like myself, moved off the Android OS models and into Apple's iOS. Or maybe you're a developer and you just want to have a play around, or maybe you want to have a look at what the experience of a Chromebook would be like to a degree. Now what they've done is a wonderful company uh, built out something called Android 86, which has now been depreciated, unfortunately, or it doesn't seem to be as supported as much. This, you can see it's had some updates, but the very latest one is 2022, which you could absolutely use that. I managed to use this, however, it's not the best experience for my trials because what's happened is the kind of support levels dropped off. So the two other ones that are very worth looking at is Blizz OS, which is, as it says, gives you that kind of incorporation or optimizations for like a Chromebook PC or tablet, or my personal favorite, which is Prime OS. Now the reason Prime OS is my put is because of what it says there, mobile gaming, because that's the most likely reason why you're going to want to try this. So it gives you the option, if you don't have an Android device, to play Android games. And like it says there, you can deploy this onto a laptop if you like. If you want to do that, go and watch my Ventoy video, and all you'll need to do is grab the ISO file, and you'll be able to deploy exactly the same way, albeit we're not building the virtual machine. So I'm going to do this with Prime OS. Now, how we're going to go about doing this is basically grab the ISO file. So we're going to download, go onto device, and it will need to be x86. You do see the option for Raspberry Pi. So if you've got Raspberry Pi, you can deploy it to one of those, which is an ARM-based device. Now, you do then get presented with the following options. Now, I have managed to get Android 11 to work. Please bear in mind, though, that both of them are very much a beta version. So don't expect them to be very stable that's why i would strongly suggest the mainline version and then all you'll need is the iso file at which point you can then click download download it and flipping back to your proxmox environment upload it into your iso container ready to go so what we're now going to do is to build the virtual machine and this is probably the most long-winded part of it which again shows how quick this process is so we just do the usual create vm give it a name so we'll call this prime os really straightforward select where your iso file has been uploaded so mine as you can see sits there which is the main line you can see the other two that i've got there as well the android that one there is the blizz os and that one is the x86 so you can see that i have tried them at some point go in here you don't need to change anything else there nor in the system, you can just leave the defaults. When it comes to here, this is down to your personal preference and choice. Select your storage. You won't need anything more than 32 gigs, really, unless you're going to do a lot of pushing apps on there. But from my point, you know, if you bought an Android device, generally, a lot of them will start with that kind of level. So 128 is probably the biggest ones you see these days so 32 is more than enough for just a bit of testing cpu wise i would strongly suggest you give it at least four cores that being said you could probably run it on two it just would run really slow and painful memory again very bare minimum i would say is four gig you can go higher you can probably try two i wouldn't recommend it though and then just select your network. Now yours most likely will be VBR0. I'll be using one because that's my larger network. Click finish. And that is pretty much it for getting the virtual machine ready. No different to what we do on a normal environment. Now what we're gonna do now is basically run off the guest side. So from my perspective, I just click start now and it will boot up into Proxmox and then into Prime OS. Now, with most Linux distros or distros built on basics of Linux, you do always get this option for live CD. So I can run this without an installation. It would just run off the ISO that I've put on. However, from our perspective, we want to do it. 
And as you can see, it is built off the Android x86 environment. So a lot of this came from them. So although the Android 86 isn't, you know, kind of maintained as much now, it was Prime OS and Bliss OS was primarily only possible because of those people. Now, what I would suggest is going to advanced options. Now, the reason for that is if you go back to the normal one, you would have to set up your partitions. Because we've done it this way, the easiest solution is just to click auto install. And what it would do is it will basically recognize your hard drive that you've assigned. So in my example, it's SDA, and it will most likely be in your case. And all you need to do is click confirm. Now, the only reason it wouldn't be is if you'd got a device that you're saying installing this on a laptop and you've got multiple hard drives in there, it may detect both and then you'd have to select the right one. But in a virtual machine environment, this is absolutely the way to go. So this will take a short while to install. Now, the good thing is about Prime OS is that particularly the mainline version, it was built with the desktop environment in mind. If you try the Android x86 version, you'll get a very vertical alignment because it's kind of built for a tablet and you won't necessarily have the desktop environment as standard when it comes out. Now you can force it into that if you decide to go to x86. Also, if you use either Bliss OS or um, Android x86, in my testing, I did have to set up a virtual wireless LAN to compensate for the fact it's hardwired. It might not be the case on all versions, but on the two versions that I ran, I absolutely had to do that. So if you do decide to run either of those, just keep that in mind. Now to set up a virtual LAN, it was really simple. It was just select a different option on Wi-Fi and off you went. However, in Prime OS, no such problems, particularly with the main line. The hardest part of this is actually just filling out your details to activate. And it doesn't really activate anything at all. So I'm not quite sure why they say activate. And I'll just find my location, which unfortunately UK is right at the bottom and pressing U does not help me whatsoever. Don't need to select the city though, which is good. Get this wonderful license in terms that you can read through to your heart's content and there you go welcome to prime os and it will do setting up your apps now the first time it runs you most likely will find that it's going to do a couple of things one will to be to update the play store libraries um, and binaries and dependencies in the background which you'll probably see in this bottom uh, taskbar in a short while and then obviously for to use stuff like the play store or to actually get the full experience you will need a Google account, so therefore you can then use the Play Store. So if you haven't got one already, you can click on Chrome and set yourself one up. Now, they start to kick in as I open stuff up. So you'll probably see in the notification panel here in a short while, it will start to add extra dependencies and libraries at the moment. Options there, or whether you want to do anything, and this is where I mentioned whether you sign into Chrome. So, if you click sign in, you haven't got to sign in, it will ask you to produce one. If you click no thanks, you can just use this without, however, it won't open up the Play Store to you. And this is where you can see it's starting to pull through some of the Play Store additional binaries that are required. So if it doesn't do what you want it to do straight away, it's not necessarily a performance issue. It's just the case that it takes a little bit of time to pull down stuff ready for it to be used. Now, you can see it's actually killed that tab for me, which I fully expected it to do. And you can move stuff about like you would normally. But let's just reopen that just so I can prove to you I can get out to the internet, I'm not making it up. And I will go and find my favorite YouTuber in the world once, uh, once we can. Should be the first on the search, shouldn't it? And there you go, you can go and watch any of my wonderful videos just right there. Now the good news is, if you have liked what you've seen today, you know what to do. Just hit that 
subscribe button, the like, and even the bell if you want the latest and greatest videos as I produce them. Now this is just one in my long line of series that I've done information and stuff on Proxmox. I am going to be branching out onto other markets soon as well, apart from just my tech reviews. I'm going to be doing a lot on the Windows um, power platform and ecosystem. But today we're obviously covering off the Android OS deployment to Proxmox. And I'll see you next time.